This is Royals in the Pros, our series where we reconnect with former Queens standout athletes who are now competing professionally in their sport. Mike Foyles here with Marius Kouch, class of 2019, three years with the Royals, three national titles, 17 individual titles. The accolades are pretty remarkable. Um, three-time Bluegrass Mountain Conference Swimmer of the Year, three-time CSCAA Male Swimmer of the Meet in the National Championships. I can keep going if you'd like. But uh, so thank you so much, first of all, for coming on today. Yeah, thank you for having me. So before Queens, you grew up in Castle, Germany. Is that right? Well, actually, that's uh, where our federation is based. I actually grew up in the, in the west of Germany and most uh, recently I've been living in Munich in, okay. uh, in the south of Germany. Gotcha. So how did uh, you were already competing internationally before Queens and in the 2016 World Championships, 2015 European Championships? How did uh, you kind of connect with Queens? How did that work out when you end up getting interested in coming to Queens? Yeah, well, so my original plan was to go to uh, the University of Louisville, but because of my eligibility, I was already studying in Germany. That didn't work out. And funny enough, uh, the head coach from Louisville, uh, Arthur Albero, shout out there, <laughs> he uh, knew Jeff Duckdale, the uh, head coach at Queens. So he forwarded me and Jeff was thrilled to have me. Um, I really wanted to change things up too. So it was a win-win situation. I gotcha. Um, graduated in 2019. Um, tell me, where, where are you right now? What are you uh, competing in right now? And just trying to walk me through some of the stuff that you've done since graduating. So yeah, after graduation, I uh, moved to uh, San Diego, California. Um, I've been training there with uh, U.S. Olympic head coach uh, David Marsh uh, under Team Elite. Um, they were actually based in uh, Charlotte for a little while. Uh, um, but Coach Marsh took the head position in San Diego. But uh, yeah, since then, I've just been training, competing. Uh, I had world championships. Uh, since then, European championships, which was really nice. I came out on top. Um, and other yeah, than was that, that the, um, yeah, the European short course championship, the 100 meter butterfly that you won? Exactly, yeah. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. How was that moment? What was that moment like? That was really nice. My parents were in the stands, so my dad was just going absolute nuts. Uh, it was nice because <laughs> I jumped on the lane line and waved to them. It was a nice moment. Because not sometimes the meets are so far away that my parents don't really get the chance to watch it. And it was even nicer to achieve that while they were there. Yeah. But yeah, other than that, I'm in uh, Budapest, Hungary right now. Um, I'm competing in like a championship series for six weeks. And there's actually a little island which they shut down just for us athletes. And we're in two hotels and they created this bubble where I'm not allowed to leave my, uh, yeah, this little island basically for the next six weeks. Uh, we're completely isolated. We're taking COVID tests every five days. They drive us to the pool and back, and you can uh, basically stay in your hotel room and you just compete. That's awesome. So, I mean, what are the what are some of the major differences between competing when you were a student athlete versus competing on a professional level? Oh, sorry. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> um, well, I actually think that competing on the collegiate level is honestly a little bit harder because you have way more competitions. It's way more frequently. Um, I always loved the the format of, you know, going there with your with your guys team, with the girls team. Um, we would always compete together, which I really like. But um, yeah, it's I don't know. It's really nice if you if you drive somewhere, you get excited as a team, you race, you do it over and over again and you just. The more you do it, the better you get at it. And it just helped me grow a lot uh, back home. We don't really have anything comparable. You just have a meet here and there, and then you get ready for your major international meet. The major international meet, and it's in a way similar. You just have to get your, your mind right. It might be a little bit more of a high pressure place, but I think the collegiate level really, really gets you ready for that because you have to, you have to learn to compete even when you're tired because we have so many meets, you can't always perform well and you can't always feel great. So you just really have to learn to, to push through. That helped me a lot. Yeah, I understand. Um, so you have competed internationally for Germany. I mean, what's it like competing for your home country on an international level? It's got to be pretty, uh, pretty amazing feeling. Yeah, it's really nice. Um, I mean, you have the team in the stands. They're all cheering for you. They're raising your flag. You walk out with your gear. You see, you know, like uh, the, the German... Uh, uh, the flag, you see the flag on it and you just know that you're like representing something bigger than just yourself. 
and you know you get all the messages from everyone back home cheering you on like come on do well i hope you're doing i hope you're doing good and everything's being televised um i really enjoy it but at the same time uh you just have to think about these moments as another meet because if you think about what's going on around you that can easily distract you and a lot of people like struggle with this with this uh, pressure thing but you just gotta enjoy the moment and i love it it's really nice having having a lot of people there that i grew up swimming with in germany and they're there watching you ching yon and vice versa it's really i, I enjoy the experience yeah um, well, you're six four, totally built like a swimmer. Did you come from a family of swimmers? Actually, not. No, my uh, my mother, uh, she just swam for fun when she was younger, but nothing competitively. And my dad was uh, canoeing on a uh, national level, but no, no one in my family ever did any professional sport. But my dad tried to get me to do the same, but I never liked being on top of the water in the boat. I always jumped out and swam, and so. <laughs> He, he's, he sold the, the canoe and he, he, knew, he knew where he should uh, sign me up for. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you had three great years at Queens. So much team success, so much individual success. Uh, any particular Queens memories that, that still stick out to you, whether it was playing sports or just other stuff of being in Charlotte? I think my very first NCAA meet, probably the very in my first year, I was uh, a redshirt, so I couldn't I couldn't compete anything. That was kind of tough. But my very first uh, NCAA meet was the one in uh, Birmingham, Alabama, and I don't know. I was just I was just surprised by, even though everyone steps on the block and I have to race my own race, um, you can think about it as you know it's just about me. I don't I don't care what the others do. That's kind of like what culture we grew up back home. In. And I was just surprised by like how much of a team you actually like are when you get there. You know everyone's having your back. Um, you care about everyone else besides you. Um, the relays every every point matters, and it's just nice seeing like all that support. Like in the beginning, I was almost overwhelmed. I was like. I don't know if this is real, if they're actually being that nice, but you know, it's just the culture. And I really, really thrived under that. No, yeah, it, it, it absolutely is. Um, I'm not, I got to go to a few swim meets this year and just the, the team culture that, that our, both our, the men's and women's swim program have at Queens. Yeah. Uh, it's but especially remarkable. at Queens, because that's, that's also not, uh, yeah, not given the norm. Program. Uh, Coach yeah. Duckdale and like the whole staff, they really did an amazing job because getting that culture to work your team is not an easy thing, but they managed to do that, you know, with the captains doing it every year, teaching everyone coming in. They, yeah, they're just really doing a great job. And that's why we've been seeing like such long-term success, why it's sustainable and not just, you know, like a one hit wonder type of thing. Gotcha. Yeah. I, we, uh, I interviewed Dion Dreesen's a few weeks ago and uh, he mentioned that you were in a bubble. So we were trying to get in, in touch with you, but uh, you guys ran into each other a little bit, right? Um, toward the end of his career and the beginning of yours, is that right? Yeah, he was he was actually my uh, roommate for two years, which was nice. Oh, um, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it was nice. Before I came to Queens, I already talked to Dion. Um, but yeah, we swam. I think the only event we ever swam against each other was the 100 free, maybe the 200 free. Um, yeah, he still has the 200 free record. I remember I swam it one time and I barely missed it. But <laughs> no, he, was a, he was a great guy, very hard worker. Um, wish him the best. And yeah, it was fun. It was it was a lot of fun. Absolutely. Well, this has been Marius Kuch, a professional swimmer. Thank you so much for, for coming on today. Everybody in the Queens community is incredibly proud of all the success you've accumulated in your professional swim career. Thank you very much. I really appreciate having a format like this. <laughs> <laughs> and, and good luck. Uh, when's your, when, is, when are you competing? When is it official? So like I've already done three swim meets. The next one is uh, this, this weekend. We have 10 teams in total. My team is already qualified for the semifinal, which we're going to do now. And then the final will be the week after. That's awesome. All righty. Well, thank you so much, Marius. Thank you very much.